Dear friends, welcome to Inquest, in-depth analysis and to the point. In this video, let us discuss about editorial for the month of October 2021. In this article, we will be discussing about smog towers. So smog towers are actually used to control air pollution. So we are going to look at an article that says, how scientific are they in controlling air pollution? So this article is useful for your UPSC mains and uh, essay writing. KPSC essay writing and any other competitive examination wherein essay writing is one of the components. So before getting into the depth of the article, let us see the entire gist of everything. So as per the orders of uh, Supreme Court, you know, it ordered the government of Delhi to use smog towers to control air pollution. So after that, the government of Delhi started installing a smog towers. So already they have uh, installed one smog tower and the second one is under uh, process. But now there is a question about its scientific evidence for its functionality. So uh, there is no proven evidence to say whether it is really able to control air pollution or not. Now, if this is the case, if smog towers are not able to control air pollution, now what are the other alternatives that we are supposed to look in for? So this is all we will be you know, discussing in this particular article. So the article says science over smog towers. So before getting into the entire details, so let us see the background of the same. So it all started in the year 2019 after the Supreme Court directed Central Pollution Control Board and Delhi government both. So it directed both CPCB and Delhi government to come up with a plan to install smog towers to combat air pollution. So it made mandatory in the year 2020 January, the Supreme Court directed that two towers should be installed by April as a pilot project to Delhi government. So after this, uh, the smog tower at Kennard Place is the first of these towers. So they installed one of these uh, smog towers at Kennard Place. The second tower being constructed at Anand Vihari in East Delhi with uh, CPCB as the nodal agency. CPCB is nothing but Central Pollution Controlling Board is nearing completion. So uh, there are two smog towers. One is completed its installation, other one is in the process. So now let's see how these uh, smog towers actually function. So this is the schematic representation of the smog tower. So smog towers will be having a length of around 24 meters and polluted air is actually fed from the top of the tower. And the air is going to flow in the downward direction. So during its journey, there are around 5,000 uh, air filters. They will be presented or installed in two layers inside the tower. And after the air passing through all these filters, the cleaned air is expected to, you know, the air uh, that is going to come down is expected to be or anticipated to be clean. And it is going to release uh, at, at around 10 meters from the ground level. So this is how the simple uh, principle of these smog towers is going to work. So smog towers are structures designed to work as large scale air purifiers. They are usually fitted with multiple layers of air filters, which clean the air of pollutants as it passes through them. It uses downdraft air cleaning system. As I told you, it uh, actually moves downward where polluted air is sucked at the height of 24 you know, meters. So uh, it is sucked at the top. So that is at the height of 24 meters and filtered air is released at the bottom of the tower at the height of about 10 meters from the ground. So this is the entire functionality of smog tower and China is the world's largest smog tower today. So let's see signs over smog towers. So two new smog towers have been recently inaugurated in Delhi. Bengaluru and Chandigarh also installed smog towers this year. Mumbai's clean air plan indicates a financial requirement of 25 crore for installing air filtration units at major tra traffic intersections in the city. While these efforts indicate that the governments are taking cognizance of air pollution, the deployments are often driven by symbolism rather than science. So this is the question. So there has been uh, cognizance uh, by each and every government to actually control air pollution. But the problem is the deployments or the methods that they are using are often driven by symbolism rather than science. So we need to, you know, use something that is scientifically proven, not that we you know we need to follow something which is not, you know, which looks just as a symbol, but not in reality. So for example, 
the Delhi government claims that the newly installed smart tower in Kannad uh, place could reduce air pollution level by 80 percentage. So if this is true, then it is def definitely significant move. Controlling air pollution to an extent of 80 percentage is a big number. But there is no scientific evidence of smoke towers or any other outdoor air filtration units improving air quality in the cities. So as it has been claimed by the government of uh, Delhi, there is no scientific evidence to prove that the efficiency of these smog towers to control the pollution to an extent of 80 percentage. So this is the raising question. So the smog towers installed in uh, China, Xi'an. So to uh, take a cross reference uh, from any other country that are using the similar kind of smog towers, we can refer back to China. So they've also installed similar smog towers, towers in two places. One is at Xi'an and another one is installed at Beijing did not prove to be eff effective and were not scaled up. So since they were not uh, proven to be effective, so they did not try to, you know, expand the similar kind of smog towers elsewhere. So that is called as they did not, you know, they were not scaled up. So smog towers create an illusion of progress. So you can note this point. It is just an illusion of progress. Illusion in the sense it is not in, it is just an imagination, but not in reality progress towards clean air while diverting crores of public money away from the pro and solution. So it is not the right thing to do, you know, investing public money, public money in the sense the exchequer's money or taxpayer's money for the solutions which are not proven to be scientific. And moreover, they misdirect policymakers and citizens by deflecting attention from areas that call for an urgent action. So uh, especially when you look at Delhi, so it is uh, seriously a uh, very chronic problem to, you know, to it has to be addressed or air pollution has to be taken care of. And such uh, measures like installing smog towers, they say that the it, uh, it is going to misdirect both policymakers and citizens by deflecting attention from areas that call for an urgent urgent action. Therefore, the government looking at investing indoor filtration systems should defer their deployment plans. So this is what is the author suggests. Further, the data on the effectiveness of the newly installed smog towers should be made available publicly for independent evaluation. So this is what is the requisition. So if they say that it is going to have you know, 80 percentage efficiency, such data should be made available publicly for independent evaluation. So now, if that is the case, now what are the other alternatives that we have to control air pollution? Meanwhile, the governments must ramp up investments in proven solutions to reduce air pollution. So first and foremost point is, you need to come, uh, you know, start or you need to use the uh, solutions that are basically scientifically proven, not something that is not scientifically proven. So that is the first point that we can add on. Now, what are the you know things that uh, are supposed to be done apart from that? So first solution, policymakers should expand air pollution monitoring in areas with limited or no air quality monitoring and strengthen forecasting capacity across the cities. So first and foremost thing is, we need to monitor the pollution, the extent of pollution that is happening. So this is like a diagnosis. So if you go to doctor, so first thing they do is diagnose and they will try to find out the cause of the disease. Similarly, we need to find out the extent of air pollution. So without knowing the extent of poll pollution, it is like searching for a solution without knowing the problem. So this is what is the problem that is happening in our country. Now, why that is so? You can see here the numbers of the 132 cities in the country that are currently don't meet the national ambient air quality standard, 75 do not have single real-time monitoring station. So you can imagine 75 out of 132 cities do not have a single real-time monitoring stations in their places, but all those cities that you know, definitely fall below the standard of national ambient air quality standards. So first and foremost, we need to know what is the extent of pollution by having single, you know, real-time monitoring stations, so which are not there in most of the cities. So for areas with no monitoring infrastructure, so when there is no monitoring infrastructure, 
alternatives like low cost air quality monitors in combination with satellite observations should be explored to plug the existing data gaps see basically we need to have data so once we have data then we can think of solutions so without having any data there is no you know it is totally illogical to think about controlling the problem so in that case we can actually look in for low cost air quality monitors so in combination with satellite observation so that we can have sufficient data then we can actually look for you know solving or giving solutions to the problems simultaneously cities should strengthen their air quality forecasting system by collaborating with scientific institutions that are transparent about their approach and finding so this is what is the gist of everything or the theme of the uh, every you know this article so we need to know what actually happening in reality it should not be like an illusion like smog towers you know it is such a big tower we think that it is controlling air pollution but scientifically it is not proven so that is the reason why the government should collaborate collaborate with scientific institutions that are actually transparent about their approach and uh, findings so these forecasts should be used in rolling out preventive measures such as travel restrictions pausing commercial activities encouraging working from home and anticipating high pollution days okay so if you have enough data by having evaluation systems we can definitely find out on which day the pollution is more so whenever on those particular days we can have various measures like you can have travel restrictions you can you know pause commercial activities and you can encourage working from home so all these things could be done if you really have the data if you do not have the data so it is like shooting in the air you it is not going to hit anybody so let's go to the second approach so second approach is uh, city level em emission inventories must be updated periodically and here we need to know who is causing more pollution that is called as city level emission inventories must be updated periodically basically here no, the first problem was we don't know the quantum of air pollution in most of the cities the second problem is we do not know who is causing more pollution even though we have the data we do not know the main source of you know the source from which the pollution is caused so that has to be updated periodically until last year over 75% of our city air plants did not contain vital information on emission from different polluting sources so this is important so we need to know the extent of air pollution caused by different sources like industries so this is the quantum of air pollution transportation this is the quantum of air pollution so if you know the values then we can definitely plug in or you know have solution to control from the source by which the air pollution is caused so these data are critical to identify key sources of air pollution and design effective clean air plans as per the local context so it depends upon you know place to place so it it may not be same in every city so that is why we can customize the plans according to the source of pollution caused by different uh, you know areas now let's go to the third approach it is uh, kind of uh, targeted efforts must be made to improve air quality for urban slum dwellers so this is actually related to slum dwellers uh, particularly who stay in uh, urban and who have no access to clean cooking energy in a recent study we found that nearly half the urban slum uh, you know household in six states still rely on biomass and other polluting fuels for their cooking needs so you can uh, just see nearly half of the you know urban slum households that means around 50% of the urban uh, slum dwellers they do not have access to you know clean uh, fuel like lpg or anything so they actually rely upon biomass or even the firewood uh, you know other uh, uh, other fuels for their cooking like firewood so that definitely leads to a lot of air pollution so also household emission increases during winter so uh, during winter uh, this household pollution is going to increase because when they use fuel for non cooking tasks like space heating increases 
so non cooking tasks like maybe you know boiling water or heating water for their bathing purpose so that adds up in winter so they may not uh, use uh, during summer because they don't need uh, hot water during summer basically uh, you know uh, that that's a reason why the household emission usually increases in winter due to using such fuels like biomass or any other uh, polluting fuels for non cooking purposes so this increases exposure to indoor air pollution that means they are creating their own air pollution and that leads to health risk so this is the complication and this is called as we need to have such targeted efforts we know we should know the area of pollution that is being produced by such people and we need to find out remedial actions hence policy makers must focus on providing lpg connections to these households along with ensuring sustainable use of lpg as the primary fuel so this is called as targeted approach so wherein we need to or policy makers should think about providing the you know solution which do not cause any air pollution and they also make them learn how to use these fuels in a sustainable way so this is the third approach and finally the most importantly the city should strengthen their enforcement capacity by investing in people and system that can keep a round the clock watch on both egregious and episodic polluters so this is very very important egregious you know they pollute always and episodic you know for no reason there will be you know bursting of crackers you know it might uh, you might have observed in many of the cities but they might have reason but i don't know every day why they will be cracking uh, you know they will be uh, you know burning crackers every day so they are called as episodic polluters so india is witnessing a raising raising democratic demand for clean air of course when the quality of the air uh, reduces definitely there will be you know raising democratic demand for uh, clean air but this cannot be met by unproven technological fixes so this is the entire theme of the article so the controlling of air pollution cannot be done by unproven technological methods instead we must vigorously pursue solutions that are rooted in science to bring back blue skies so this is the entire article so if you have any questions definitely you can put in comments box so we will be more than happy to answer your questions thanks for watching namaskara